Then I'm joined in the studio by Anders Monson, CEO of Rovac. Welcome Anders and please go ahead. Thank you. So welcome everybody to the Rovac presentation. My name is Anders Manson and I'm the CEO of the company. Uh, Rovac is a, a company that specializes in immuno-oncology and we have an exciting drug candidate which is already in phase 2b. It is a candidate that is applied in an adjuvant setting with an aim to prevent cancer recurrence. We do this by targeting migrant metastatic cancer cells, potentially of several cancer types and tissue types, after primary tumor therapy and before the formation of metastatic tumors, thereby avoiding the tumor defense lines and avoiding uh, the cold tumor traps. As I said, our product is in clinical stage uh, phase 2b in prostate cancer. We treat patients with biochemical recurrence after uh, initial therapy. We do have a fast track designation by the FDA in this indication, and we are backed financially by the European Innovation Council in the Horizon 2020 uh, program. We will be looking for a partner, a licensed partner, or potentially an acquisition partner after study conclusion uh, in mid 2022. Uh, the antigen that we're using for our therapy is ROSI, as is also depicted in our logo. Let's examine the story behind this antigen. Rovac was founded about a decade ago, and already back in 2009, the US National Cancer Institute ranked ROSC as a prioritized cancer antigen, citing it as being ideal for cancer vaccine development. This was based on prior studies showing that in normal cells, ROSC is silenced and has no interaction with the immune system, uh, while uh, with metastatic potential cells, ROSC is overexpressed and the immune system can identify these cells as foreign and eliminate them. And to the right in this slide, you will see a diagram. The x-axis is effector target cell uh, ratio and the y-axis is the ability to lyse these cells. So it's essentially a dose response uh, curve. And what is interesting in this diagram is that we've tried this with different types of cancer cells and different types of tissues. And you can see in the diagram that there is no significant difference between the different types of cancers and tissues. So we think that we have here a potentially tissue agnostic uh, treatment concept. If we move to the left of the slide again, in 2012, it was concluded that overexpression of ROSC in metastatic cancer cells was shown in a majority of cancer types, signifying that this has a potentially great potential and also in several types of cancer stem cells. And then in 2019, it was concluded that ROSC has an indispensable role in metastases and that it regulates cancer stem cells. And in this article, they also cited that ROSC seems to be an ideal druggable target, which we're essentially basing Rovac on. So our conclusion from this is that ROSC targeted T cell activation is a potentially tissue agnostic therapy concept aimed specifically at metastatic cancer cells. Now, of course, in order to be effective, you also have to elude tuber defense lines, and we do that by avoiding the problem. I think everybody recognizes that immunotherapy has offered a great contribution to cancer therapy, uh, but the issue of cold tumors, of course, uh, remains a significant factor. And this is because the tumor structure itself can give rise to defense mechanisms that exclude immune uh, system cells, so that the tumor becomes immune excluded or even immune desert. And rather than trying to force entry, Rovax ROSI-based T-cell activator RV001 targets migrant metastatic cancer cells before they can form metastatic tumors uh, that can protect the, the cancer cells from the uh, immune cells. Uh, and thus we elude the tumor defense lines. So in essence, we consider RV001 to be designed as a non-toxic sort of nip it in the bud therapy targeting the deadly seed of undetectable migrant metastatic cancer cells potentially remaining after primary tumor therapy. Because let's be honest, at the time of the primary tumor therapy, there is no way that a physician can guarantee that isolated metastatic cancer cells have not already escaped the primary tumor and can cause problems later on. And we know far too well that this is a very common problem in cancer therapy. So summarizing our therapeutic concept here, it's essentially a one plus two concept. One, we rely on a proven technology, which is sometimes referred to as cancer vaccination, 
more specifically its antigen-based T-cell activation via dendritic cells and antigen-presenting cells. And we add two new components to this. First, we add the new target protein, which is Rho C, which makes us able to treat this with a, a tissue agnostic concept. It's tissue agnostic, but it is also specific to metastatic cancer cells. Also, we add the treatment paradigm, which is new. This is the adjuvant treatment paradigm uh, where we aim our therapy at migrant metastatic cancer cells prior to their being able to erect the uh, tumor defense lines, thus avoiding the cold tumor traps. Let's look at how this would be applied in the prostate cancer setting in which we're going for our first clinical proof of concept and in which we have the fast track designation by the FDA. The diagram here shows uh, prostate cancer diagnoses of various categories in the seven major markets in the world. So if you look to the left, you will see that these are the local or locally advanced prostate cancers, just shy of a million cases per year. In the middle, there are the biochemical recurrences after primary tumor therapy, which is the ones that we're targeting. And to the right, you will see the clinically manifest metastatic prostate cancers. And Interestingly, this latter stage is where pretty much all of the prostate cancer drug market is focused today, whereas we can apply our treatment earlier than this. And the reason why the established therapy cannot apply their treatments earlier than this is because of the side effect profiles of these treatments. So they're essentially hormonal or castration therapies, uh, which obviously has a lot of side effects, both in terms of libido loss uh, and, and uh, erectile dysfunction, but also in the longer term metabolic side effects that can cause uh, cardiovascular problems. As our product doesn't have that kind of uh, side effect profile, we can move upstream and uh, try to uh, target these patients already when they only have biochemical failure as an indicator that their disease might be progressing. So the objective of our treatment is obviously uh, to decrease the number of patients that have to progress to the uh, metastatic state and also for those who progress anyway, uh, to try to ensure that they have more time to slow down the process of progression. So looking at this from a patient perspective, when we got the fast track designation for this uh, back in, in the end of 2020, uh, we had a lot of uh, articles published about ROBAC and about our therapy, and a lot of patients actually wrote to us asking to participate in the study. Uh, and a lot of these patients also express their sentiments about this treatment. So this is a typical example, which I've obviously shortened and anonymized somewhat. So, hi, your drug would be the holy grail for patients like me. I had surgery, prostatectomy in 2016, and then after that the PSA has crept up. And this is obviously very stressful. Uh, and many patients ask for if they can participate in the, in the trial, of course. But this is exactly the problem. In many types of cancer, there are adjuvant treatments to prevent uh, the progression into metastatic state after primary uh, tumor therapy. But in prostate cancer, there is no standard therapy for this. And this is the unmet medical need uh, that we're addressing with our compound. Let's look at the results that we have so far. So these are the phase one, two results uh, from a study that we did in 2018 and had a one year follow up that concluded in 2019. So this is a study of 22 patients. We used 11 injections over about uh, 30 weeks. And the patients reported only very mild, which is grade two or less reversible injection site reactions, uh, which we attribute to the adjuvant effect. So this is essentially very mild side effects. Uh, and in terms of the results, we also had significant and long lasting Rho C specific and relevant immune response in 86% of the patients. And this was 86% of the patients after the final injection, but also 86% of the patients a year after the final injection, so that we know it's long lasting. So our conclusion here is that RV001 was proven safe, well tolerated and effective in inducing the targeted immune response. And results also indicated that disease progression may be postponed. And this is obviously to be confirmed by the much larger and currently ongoing phase 2b trial, which is uh, placebo controlled. So let's examine what we study in the phase 2b study. Uh, this is again a larger study, 180 patients across 40 centers in Europe and the US. Uh, and we used 12 injections. So we've added a booster injection to make sure that this is really 
an immune, uh, immunization that stays for a long while. Uh, our aim is to prevent progression in prostate cancer uh, in patients with biochemical failure after curative intent therapy, and this is both radical prostatectomy and definitive radiation therapy. Uh, we aim to finalize recruitment in quarter three in 2021 and conclude the study and compute results mid-2022. So looking at expansion potential from this. So again, the first targeted proof of concept is preventing progression and clinical uh, prostate cancer recurrence in, in patients with biochemical recurrence, i.e. a rising PSA. Uh, but again, putting this diagram into context, we can also go left or upstream, if you like, providing additional protection for patients who are not suitable candidates uh, for surgery or radiation or if they have other risk factors. But we can also go right in this diagram uh, and possibly apply our treatment as a combination therapy with ADT or hormonal treatment in late stage patients uh, so as to combat also non-hormone sensitive metastatic cells because the problem with hormonal therapy is, of course, that it targets only hormonal cell sensitive cells, whereas our treatment doesn't discriminate. So the combination of the two might actually uh, provide a more long lasting uh, effective treatment. But of course, since our treatment concept is potentially tissue agnostic, the major expansion possibility might lie in other cancers. As we are uh, approaching late stage uh, development, we are being seen, uh, uh, being uh, put up on the radar screens of analysts uh, 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 surveying the prostate cancer market. And as you can see here from uh, one of the an analysts called uh, Delve Insight, uh, our product is forecast to have a turnover of about a billion US dollars. Now, important to notice with this, this is only in the currently targeted uh, prostate cancer indication. Obviously, if we expand within prostate cancer or even outside of prostate cancer, this number will be even greater. Uh, we're also analyzed by third parties, for example, Edison Group, and they have a risk adjusted valuation of our company of 1.3 billion Swedish crowns, uh, or uh, the equivalent of 130 million euros. Uh, and this valuation is also based on sales uh, potential and benchmark licensing deals uh, with the risk adjustment applied and the analysis consider the value only in the currently studied prostate cancer indication. So any expansion uh, will, of course, increase the value here. This slide uh, looks at the uh, timelines for rollback going forward. It's divided into a yellow uh, section and a gray section, which is more background uh, projects. But the key projects is, of course, the finalization of our phase two development program. Uh, where, as I said, we aim at uh, recruiting all patients by quarter three of this year and then completing the treatment of these recruited patients by mid-2022. And then we'll transfer immediately into a final negotiation stage uh, with those companies interested in this. We do have a dialogue with about 20 uh, companies today. Uh, if you're interested, please uh, join that group of companies. In the background, uh, we, can, we ha can highlight perhaps that we're doing a further follow-up study to the phase one, two patients. This is now three years after their study conclusion, so it will be interesting to see how they're doing. We're also repeating some preclinical work and doing uh, more preclinical work in terms of uh, mapping out the uh, dose response uh, in the other types of cancer as was shown uh, previously. A few words perhaps on the people working in Roback. We've gone for very experienced people. Most of us have uh, more than 25 years of experience in pharma and biotech, both from development and also from actually doing deals uh, in this area. And we also have a very senior scientific advisory board, perhaps best exemplified by Professor Per Anders Abrahamsson, uh, who used to be the Secretary General of the European Association of Urology. So summarizing, we're targeting a very common type of cancer patient. It's the patient whose cancer might recur after initial treatment success. We all know that this is a very common type of patient. We elude the tumor defense lines by avoiding to uh, treat tumors. We target migrant metastatic cells after primary tumor therapy, but before the forming of metastatic tumors. We have currently a, a large uh, proof of concept based a phase 2b uh, study in prostate cancer it's a study that for which we are an indication for which we have fast track designation and the results will be available mid 2022 
after which we will seek a, a partnership for this. And we are endorsed by the FDA in the fast track designation, but also by the European Innovation Council financially. Uh, and again, it was considered a potential game changer for cancer therapy. And with this, I thank you very much for your attention and I leave you with some contact details. Thank you very much. Well, thank you too, Anders, for a very interesting presentation. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the clinical studies that, are, that you are doing. So in addition to the phase 2b study, you are also doing a follow-up of the phase 1-2 study. What are your hopes for that study? Well, we hope to find the patients in, in good health, obviously. I mean, we had a one-year follow-up to the phase 1-2, uh, and that showed excellent results. The, uh, the immunization was still in operation, and also in terms of PSA. Most of those patients were in complete PSA remission, and those that were not in complete PSA remission at least had an extension of that PSA doubling time. And we certainly hope to find similar results in, in this follow-up. And you're also doing preclinical studies with RV001, uh, what are the, the aims of those studies? Well, we aim to, to prove again that uh, our, our therapy concept is completely tissue agnostic. So it makes no difference if it's prostate cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, whatever type of cancer, uh, that we're able to lyse metastatic cancer cells irrespective of the tissue type, which is obviously very important. And then we're also uh, aiming to describe in greater detail the mode of action uh, of our therapeutic concept. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned here, the aim is to have an out-licensing agreement in place by um, 2022. Can you tell us a bit about the interest that you've seen in your project? Yeah, there is obviously great interest. Obviously, uh, the Phase 2B uh, program has to come out uh, with good results, but uh, provided that that happens, uh, I'm sure quite a few companies will be interested. Well, thank you so much for coming, Anders. Thank you.